Okay, now we're going to talk about <clears throat> one of my favorite subjects, which is the lymphatic system. Now, in an introductory anatomy and physiology textbook, the lymphatic system very often includes the immune system. Are they the same? No, they're not the same. The lymphatic system is our secondary transportation system. It's its own system. The immune system uh, uses the lymphatic system. Uh, so it makes sense to put them in the same chapter, but technically different systems. I have posted some really good uh, crash course video links for you to review. And as I was watching them, first of all, enjoyed them a lot. I think they're really great. Um, but one of the things that I noticed was that when we get to the immune system, the immune system is so complicated it's so complicated that every uh, professor is going to leave off a topic or two. Um, I noticed that the crash course professors left off something that I always include and I have left off something that they include. Uh, keep in mind, I'm the one who wrote these exams. So wherever there is a disconnect between the two, listen to mine, but I really like the explanation that he had of vaccination. So maybe have a look at that. So the lymphatic system. Lymphatic system is our secondary transportation system. And as our secondary transportation system, what is it transporting? It actually is transporting a substance known as lymph. Lymph is a liquid that's very much like the plasma that is a part of your blood. <clears throat> it is essentially your blood plasma after the large proteins like fibrinogen and albumin have been filtered out. That's going to become our lymph. Now, <clears throat> even really small children are familiar with the idea that we've got a heart and we've got blood, right? They've seen the blood, you can see blood vessels, and you can feel your heart beating. But almost no one really thinks about the lymphatic system. Frankly, I don't think about it that much. However, there is a second entirely separate series of tubes that are carrying a, a clear liquid that is under very low pressure. And it is carrying that um, from the outside parts of our body back towards the heart. So if we look here on this image on the right, we can see uh, on this artist's rendering that there are all of these, all of these green lines, right? Each one of those green, green lines is actually representing a lymphatic vessel. So think of it like a vein, but it doesn't carry blood, it carries lymph. Um, uh, those uh, lymphatic vessels will travel periodically through organs that are called lymph nodes. And so you can see places where I'm circling, where there are, are kind of green bulges on these, lymphatic, uh, on these lymphatic vessels, and those are equivalent to your lymph nodes. The fluid called lymph that is in these vessels, called lymphatic vessels, is under less pressure, so it's kind of just moseying along. And as it moseys along, it'll travel through small organs called lymph nodes. And so look over here at this image on the left. At the image on the left, they have got the cardiovascular system um, uh, with the lymphatic system superimposed on top of it. Let's look at the differences. So when it comes to the cardiovascular system, we're going to learn that blood leaves the heart in blood vessels called arteries. So this is an artery right here. Ooh, that's messy. Then it'll go through little capillaries, the blood will. As the blood goes through capillaries, a little bit of the watery part of the plasma, well, the plasma is already the watery part of the blood. When I say the watery part of the plasma, I mean the part of the plasma that does not have big proteins like albumin and fibrinogen in it. 
So it's water with glucose in it and sodium in it and other really tiny molecules like insulin, okay? So that kind of gets filtered out. Remember filtration from our osmosis lab? That gets filtered out at the level of the capillaries. Now, at the level of the capillaries, most of that stuff that is called lymph, most of that stuff called lymph is going to leave here and it's going to jump back in and it's going to head back to the heart in these blue blood vessels that are called veins, but not all of it. A little tiny bit is going to remain behind. That little tiny bit of watery stuff that stays behind as the blood is whooshing through all of your capillaries, that little tiny bit that stays behind, it is going to end up becoming lymph and going back towards your heart in the second set of tubes that is called the lymphatic vessels. And as it goes through back towards the heart, it'll end up going through lymph nodes, lymph nodes, and it'll end up going back to your heart and rejoining your blood. Right? So it is a secondary transportation system. Now, uh, one of the things that you may have noticed about the cardiovascular system is that uh, blood will go from the heart out through arteries to maybe your brain, and then it comes back in veins, back to your heart, and it keeps going round and round and round and round. The lymphatic system is different. The lymphatic system does not have a heart to power it. The lymphatic system also um, does not have a circuit. The lymphatic st system starts out where the capillaries are and heads back towards the heart. So it's a, it's a one-way system. It's not a loop kind of system. It starts outside and it just brings all of that stuff called lymph back towards the heart back where it will rejoin the blood. And what is the job of the lymphatic system? Well, the main job of the lymphatic system is to maintain fluid balance. When we get to the cardiovascular system, I'll explain to you why it is intended for blood to let some of that watery part of the plasma leave here and splash across these cells, why it's actually a good thing, okay? Um, but the way the system is set up, even though most of that watery stuff rejoins the blood and goes back with the, the, in the veins, some of it doesn't, so we need to regather that stuff or else, you know, like for every time a tablespoon of blood travels through this thing called a capillary bed, every time a tablespoon of blood travels through there, about a drop of blood is going to end up uh, being left behind, okay? Well, if all those drops started accumulating, uh, that would end up causing a problem. So we need the lymphatic system to help everything go back to the heart. And we call that maintaining fluid balance. Now, when we get to the digestive system, you will learn that lipid absorption is another uh, function of the lymphatic system, lipid absorption. There are little dead-end tubes. Let me change my pen color to red here. There are little dead-end tubes that look like this in all of your intestinal tract. And those little dead-end tubes, uh, they are gathering up all of the fat that you have digested from your meal, and they are also taking that back towards the heart. Um, another job of the lymphatic and immune system is really a job of the immune system, and the job of the immune system is to protect your body from infection and disease. So the lymphatic capillary, this stuff that's in a lymphatic capillary is called lymph. Oh, where's my little pointer? Oh, there you are, okay. It's called lymph, it's clear, it's colorless, it's similar to plasma, it's just missing the big proteins, albumin and fibrinogen. Otherwise, it's really, really similar. These uh, lymphatic capillaries are kind of leaky, so when the pressure, when the pressure is higher here than it is in here, lymph will go in 
and head back on its way towards the heart. One of the things that's important about lymphatic vessels is that they contain valves, valves. Lymphatic vessels and also veins in the other part of your cardiovascular system, uh, they contain valves. Now, I know this picture is upside down because it makes more sense to me that way. Whenever uh, these little tubes get squeezed, like let's imagine I'm reaching at the part right, let me change the color of my pen again, I'm gonna change it to blue, okay? Let's imagine that this part of this lymphatic vessel right here, okay, I'm going to squeeze there. When I squeeze there, that's going to make the lymph that's in here go up through this valve. This valve is like this, okay? It's really easy for some fluid to go out through there and then back like that. But once it's out there, even if I were, even if I were to let go of the pressure down here, the fluid would not come back down because it would get trapped here by this valve. Uh, these valves make it possible so that as you're walking around, your muscles squeeze on these little tubes called lymphatic vessels, also veins, and that pushes the blood up through a valve and then it can't come back down again because of the valve. And then it gets squeezed from there and it goes up, goes up one more over and over again. Okay. And that allows lymph to flow. Remember, lymph is not being powered by the heart. Actually, veins are not being powered by the heart anymore either. So we're going to be talking about how lymph flows at a very slow uh, speed and it's under very little pressure. So it needs help to get back to the heart, especially as it's climbing up from your feet, right? Now, in the lymphatic system, it also will get moved by a little bit of smooth muscle contraction. This is true for the lymphatics, but not for the veins, right? However, veins will share this way of getting blood back to the heart, the skeletal muscle pump. And the skeletal muscle pump, I kind of explained to you, whenever skeletal muscle contracts, it's, it ends up inadvertently squeezing on veins and on lymphatic vessels, and that pushes blood from or lymph from one chamber up through a valve to the next little chamber, and then that gets squeezed and it goes up again to the next one. The thoracic pump. The thoracic pump is actually a mechanism. It's not a thing that I can point to. The thoracic pump is every time I inhale, I create a vacuum inside of my thoracic cavity. Now, the thoracic cavity's vacuum pulls air in, but it also pulls blood and lymph up from our legs up into our thoracic cavity. That's the thoracic pump. Neither the skeletal muscle pump nor the thoracic pump would be useful at, a, at all if veins and lymphatic vessels did not have those little things called valves. They're very simple. Okay. Oh, and so deep breathing and exercise significantly return the amount of lymph that is coming back to your heart. I don't know if this has ever happened to you. If you've ever been like on a long airplane ride or a long car ride, if you're just stuck and you have to sit in one place for a long time, your feet will swell up. Why did that happen? While you were sitting there, you're not breathing very deeply, your muscles aren't moving, so the lymph is not getting pushed back towards your heart, and the lymph pools in your feet, and your feet get swollen. Okay, we're going to start here on the next lecture.